Hello, everyone. My name is Ryan Looney. I'm the Customer Services Director here at Overleaf. Thank you all for um, joining our webinar today. We're really excited to kick off um, what we hope will be the first of many webinars available to anyone who wants to join them in the Overleaf community. I'm going to give just a few more minutes um, for folks to get joined up as I see people are still rolling in. Um, in the meantime, if you have any questions, there will be a, a Q&A segment um, at the end, and I'll also answer some questions during the webinar. And you should be able to enter your questions um, in your chat box or the questions panel, um, and we'll keep an eye on those and make sure that we answer as many questions as we can during the time we have together today. Okay. And um, can everyone hear me so far? I'm gonna go ahead and get started with everything. Um, it sounds like people can hear me just fine, most of them. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started. And um, if uh, uh, you have any questions, again, please feel free to um, post those in the chat panel and we'll get to those um, uh, as, as we can. Um, and it looks like there is a question about um, folks being muted. You are in uh, what's called listen only mode. So that means that um, you won't be able to speak, but we will take questions through the um, question uh, panel or the chat panel. Um, and if you're having um, any other trouble with audio, you may want to just leave and then join back in. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started and you should all be able to see my screen. Um, with our introductory slide on it. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna go over some very basic information about Overleaf and about LaTeX. So this is our agenda today. Um, we'll go over some background about um, Overleaf and um, also a little bit of information about LaTeX. We'll talk about creating a new project, um, also about rich text mode, which allows you to see your project um, and edit it with less code. Um, we'll talk, of course, about editing a project, sharing a project, and then we'll have um, time for questions and answers at the end. Okay, so some of you may be wondering what this is. And um, if you've ever been to Heathrow's Terminal 5, you may have had the pleasure of taking this little pod from uh, Terminal 5 to the car park. And um, this is where Overleaf began. Our two co-founders, John Hammersley and John Leighton Miller, were math PhD students, and they were working on making these driverless cars a reality. Um, and as they were math folk, as many of you might be, um, they were working and collaborating in LaTeX. And over uh, LaTeX, if you're not familiar with it, is not unlike HTML, where you write in plain text and you use some commands and surround that text um, that will describe its structure and meaning. And it'll go through a compiler, and then it will produce a really nicely formatted document on the other side. So you can see we've got just a couple of examples here of an itemized list, what the code would look like for that, um, an image, and then, of course, some math. And math is really where Overleaf shines, as some of you may already know. So um, depending um, on what you're doing in LaTeX, um, this may be very important to you. And you can see that you can actually write math um, in our editor, and we'll see a little bit more about that later and it will display really nicely formatted. And as you probably know, this is really, really hard to do in um, something like Word or another traditional word processing program. And so 
to write all that nice stuff, all those nice scientific equations and expressions that have a lot of special characters where there are tables and images, um, LaTeX is a really great way to be able to do that and have a lot of control over the output that you'll see at the end. And these are just a few very, very basic commands um, in LaTeX if you're not familiar with it. Um, so commands will start with a backslash. You'll have arguments and curly braces. You comment things out with the percent sign. And there are a few characters like that percent sign and some others that have special meanings. So if you actually want those to display, you'll have to escape them. And so if you've ever worked on um, a Word document, you know it can get out of sync pretty quickly if you're emailing back and forth with your collaborators. And LaTeX not only has a single document, but it's actually typically a collection of several documents um, that are all bundled up into one project. So that will include a main file, a class file or style file that will tell that output how to behave. Um, image files are held separately. And of course, you'll probably have a bibliography file as well. Um, and this is just kind of the minimum uh, number of files. You can actually have multiple um, tech documents. So if you're working on something that has several chapters, each one of those chapters might be its own uh, tech file as well. So imagine getting out of sync with that single Word document. And it's even more of an issue when you're working on something like LaTeX, where you're um, transmitting several files at once. And it's even a little bit more complicated because LaTeX is um, open source software that's been around for a very long time. So it's the kind of thing where if you have a local installation of, of LaTeX, then everyone's kind of got their own flavor. And so maybe you used a package that your collaborator didn't and vice versa. And they either might not be able to open or might not be able to correctly compile the files that you've sent them. So this is the the issue that um, John and John were dealing with when they were working together. And they decided that they need to make um, one version in the cloud accessible to everyone. And this is where Overleaf came from. Um, so no local installation is needed. You can control who can see and collaborate on your project. You can integrate other, ser other services, and you can also track your versions really easily. You can see a history of who made which changes. Um, so I'm going to go to a demo, and before I do that demo, um, I'm going to um, ask a question in the poll, do you already have an Overleaf account? So if you don't mind um, clicking on that um, poll that has popped up, so we can take a look and see who's got an Overleaf account so far. So it looks like most folks do have an Overleaf account account so that's great if you don't already have an account um, that's fine as well you can go right now or after this um, webinar if you'd like to overleaf.com slash register and create an account you can just create a free account um, and and everything we're going to do today you'll be able to do with a free account all right um, so thanks for that and then if you do have an account, um, you can actually go to this URL, um, bit.ly slash overleaf hyphen intro, and that will bring you to a read-only version of a document that we're going to work on today. Um, and I'll show you in just a moment, once folks have had a chance to um, navigate to that URL, I'll show you in a moment how you can make your own copy of that project. Um, and while we're doing that, I just want to also ask you another quick question about what your experience level is with Overleaf. And this um, webinar is really for um, those who are relative beginners um, with Overleaf. Um, and it looks like that's most of you at this point. So thanks again for, for um, indicating your experience level in this poll. Okay, so I think we've had about enough time for folks who want to, to navigate to this URL. So I'm gonna um, head uh, out of this presentation and go into a uh, browser. And so what you've um, 
the URL that you've gotten takes you to a read-only version of this document that I created. Um, and if you'd like to create your own copy of this document, there are a couple of different ways to do it. If you go to your um, project dashboard, which is where I am right now, um, you'll see that there and you can click on the copy icon. Um, you can also just stay in the opened project um, and from the menu, there's a copy project um, icon in here. So that's one way to create a brand new project within Overleaf is just to copy an existing project. Um, and that's a great way to get started, um, to take a project that someone else has done um, and use that as an example and a basis for some of your work. So you can copy that project. And once you copy the project, um, that copy is your copy. No one else can see it unless you share it with them. So I'm gonna go back to my project dashboard um, just so that I don't change that project for folks who haven't opened it yet. Um, and I'm just gonna go into a, a similar but different um, demo project as well so that we can talk about a few things. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and um, go through some of the basics with Overleaf and a few um, LaTeX basics as well. Um, so one of the things we've already done is created a new project. So we've created a new project by um, copying a project. There are a couple of other ways you can create a brand new project if you'd like. So um, I'm actually gonna go back up to my project dashboard. That was that little up arrow there. And you can see there's a great big new project button right there in your project dashboard. So if I click on that, I can elect to open a blank project and that has nothing in it. Um, an example project, um, which is the our sample that has that um, picture of the, the universe in there. Um, you can upload an existing project from a zip file. So if someone gives you a zip of their LaTeX project, you can um, use this to upload it. Um, you can import from GitHub as well. And you'll also see we have some selections for templates too. So we have a very large uh, template gallery right now. We have over 6,000 um, uh, templates available to you. Um, most of them will, uh, uh, most of those templates are submitted by community members and anyone can submit a template. Um, and then there are a few that we've worked on um, with some of our other partners, such as um, universities and publishers. So um, you may see those in there as well. And that's a great place to get started too, because those templates have all been through a, a brief approval process um, that um, means that they, at the very least, they compile and they work. So you know that that project um, is gonna work for you as well. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just go back into my demo project here and we'll do a little bit of um, editing in here. So just to give you a quick tour of this editor before we go too much farther. So you'll see we've got the file pane over here. So this is where our files live. Um, so our main file, this is the, the one that we're working on right now. Um, we've got references um, and then this universe.jpg. That's our image here. So uh, I had said before, all of our images are held separately. So if you wanna upload any files into your project, you can do that with um, the little upload button right here, one of those little icons there. Um, you can also uh, make folders. So if you want to organize your files into folders, which you may wish to do, once you have a lot more files, um, you can do that. For instance, you could just make an image folder and put everything in there if you wanted to. Um, and so then once you create that folder, um, you'll see you have some options with it as well. So you can upload a file uh, directly into that or create a new file within that folder as well. Um, and then we also have a new file uh, image here. So if you wanna create a brand new file as well, you can do that from within your project. Um, you also have the ability to rename and to delete. So whatever is highlighted here, you can rename it or delete it. So I'm gonna go ahead and just delete this extra folder since I'm not actually using it right now. 
Okay, so then some other things you want to take a look at. Um, I had used before this little arrow gets you back to your project dashboard. Um, so that's an important one to know about. So if you want to see your list of projects and you're within a project, you can use that arrow. And then this menu opens up a whole bunch of options for you. Um, and this is a good thing to um, sort of cruise through and just see what's available to you um, within Overleaf. So um, download is really important. So at some point you're going to want to download your project either for um, to share it with someone, to have it as a backup, to um, download that PDF for publication or other distribution. So you can do that there um, right from within here. Um, then we also have some sync options, which I'm not really going to talk about today. Um, and then some other kind of advanced options that you may want not want to deal with. But but one that's pretty basic that you may want fairly soon is which document is the one that's being um, compiled as the main document. And in this case, we only have that one tech file. Um, but if you have multiple tech files, so for instance, if you have a tech file for each chapter, um, you can switch that main document and look at one chapter at a time if you'd like. Um, you can also change your um, theme. So if you decide you don't like the, the dark surround, you can change it to light. And you'll see it's gone uh, light for me. And you can also change your editor theme. So if you decide you want your editor and your um, uh, syntax highlighting to look different, you can do that as well. So um, that's in the menu. Also. So I'm actually going to change it back and change it back to default here. Um, and there are a few other things um, in this menu as well. Um, one of the um, important things, which um, I think we've had a question about how do you get in touch with us, um, you can actually click that contact us um, link right in uh, the menu and that will um, open up a form that automatically appends your project URL so that our support team can help you um, and allows you to send us a message. Okay, so I'm going to do a little bit of um, editing now and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in rich text mode. So this allows you to edit um, without seeing lots of code. Um, it, it does show you a little bit of code. So you can see I've made this list of helpful links here. Um, and it does show kind of the code behind those links, but it's a little less daunting if you're brand new or if your um, collaborator maybe isn't as familiar um, to uh, LaTeX as you are. Um, so, that um, is, is one way, and you can actually edit right in. So this is editing in rich text. And you don't have to do any um, LaTeX at all. So I can also make a list. This is a list in rich text. Um, so I don't have to know any LaTeX code to build that um, itemized list there. So that can be really helpful if you're just getting started. And there are a few other editing options um, up on the top bar as well. Now I can go back to source and you'll see it's actually really nicely built in the um, source code that was needed for that list as well. So um, it shows it um, in the source, even if it's not showing it in the um, editing pane. And so one thing that you'll notice is right now I've added this list, but it's not showing up here. And the way that you um, show the stuff that you have added into your document is by recompiling. You can set Overleaf to automatically recompile, but if you want to just um, type along and um, not be interrupted by compiling, you can, um, it defaults to actually not compiling automatically. So you can just um, click recompile and it will show you. And now we've got our um, list there. So um, that's some very, very basic editing. Um, you'll see, I do want to show you, there's um, just a couple of parts to your LaTeX document that you'll need to have. So one is the preamble. 
So the preamble is stuff that doesn't get displayed in the document, but it does show LaTeX a little bit about what to do with it. So you'll see these packages here. Um, this is for the bibliography, this is for the images, and this is for the links. Um, so you'll have a preamble that pulls in all of these packages and each of them do um, stuff. Uh, so um, if you want um, certain kinds of math modes, you'll need a special package um, for that to pull that in. And we have um, lots and lots of packages available to do everything that you need to do within um, LaTeX. Another thing that you'll notice is that we've got a begin document. So once the preamble um, has all the information that it needs, there's a begin document. And you'll see at the very end, there's also an end document. So you always need to make sure that your document has a beginning and an end in there. And then, of course, um, as with any other kind of code, um, if you sort of open up a, a curly bracket, you need to make sure to close it. And same thing with the um, beginning and ending. So if you begin something, so here is where we've begun our figure, we need to make sure to end it as well. Now, one of the great things about Overleaf is collaboration. So um, I wanna make sure to show you how to share your work with others. So here we go. Um, there's just the share button right here. We can click on share and there are a few things I can do. So one of the things I can do, and you can see um, I've already done this once, is I can invite collaborators. So um, on the free account, you can invite one other collaborator per project and our um, upgraded paid accounts let you invite more collaborators. Um, so I can invite um, one other collaborator as a free person. I'm gonna remove this and I'll just do it again so that you can see uh, what exactly you have to do. So you just type in their email address. And this is my other identity. You select whether they can edit or read only, and then you can share. And once that user accepts your invitation, um, it'll show that they've accepted it and you can change their permissions or you can revoke the invitation as well. If you want to share more broadly, so for instance, if, um, you want to share it more publicly, um, like I did with the um, read-only uh, link. Um, and it looks like we might have had a couple of errors um, uh, based on the questions, but um, if you wanna make a read-only link, um, you can see there's the, um, anyone with this link can view this project. And then this link, um, anyone can edit that project. So. Um, this is really great if you want to share quickly um, with lots of folks. Now, this does mean that anyone with the URL who has an Overleaf account can then open that project. So what that means is that if you email me that editable link and then I post it on Twitter, uh, now the entire Twitterverse has access to your project. So um, you can't control it the way you can with the invited um, with the uh, invited collaborators, but it also just makes it really easy to share. So for instance, if you're teaching a class and you want your entire class to have access to a particular document, you can give them that URL. Um, and it makes it really easy for other folks to access your work. Okay, I know we are getting close to time. And so I want to take a minute to um, address some of the um, questions that we've had come up. So one is, can you search for a template um, by name or by keyword? Yes, you can. So if um, we go, let me go back up to my project dashboard. Um, and actually, let me go to just um, overleaf.com slash templates. That'll take us to the template uh, landing page. And the template landing page, we have several categories here, but you can also just search. So if you're submitting to IEEE, you can um, search on IEEE and see all of these that are um, associated with IEEE. Um, any template that we have worked on with um, that uh, organization, we'll mark it as official. So the one that says IEEE official template, that's something that we have worked on directly with the IEEE. Um, so 
that's something that matches up with all of their current requirements. So I can click on that tag and then I can see the other ones that are official as well. Um, so yes, you can search on, uh, search on keywords and names for templates. Um, I had another question about um, how do you find these packages for including in the preamble? And this is a nice segue from templates. So um, if you actually open up a template, and let me open up this uh, template here. Then you'll notice that um, you've already got all of the packages um, built in. So the preamble is um, is is already um, set up with all the packages that you'll need um, to accomplish everything that is being done in this template. So. Um, templates are a good place to start for packages. Um, another place to look is um, there's uh, something called CTAN, um, CTAN.org, I believe, and that has um, that's kind of the repository for all the packages. Um, and so those will um, CTAN can tell you sort of the specifications and documentation around every package. Um, just as a personal example, I am a knitter and I use a knitting package. Um, that I found the documentation for on CTAN in some of my personal projects to build knitting patterns. So there are all kinds of packages out there. And as a beginner, I do suggest um, that you um, use templates or you use packages that you've um, found um, from other projects that, that you've uh, shared with. Um, and then we have a few other questions here. Um, is link sharing included with free accounts? Yes, link sharing is included with all free accounts. So any free account um, can share as much as you want with links. Um, free accounts can only invite one other collaborator per project. Um, that's a great question. So thank you for uh, having me clarify that. Um, so you can share as much as you want with links from a free account. Um, and you can invite one person uh, from a free account and more with the paid accounts. Um, and um, how do you load a bibliography from EndNote? Ah, that's such a great question. We don't have a ton of time for that, but um, I do wanna just show you how to get started. So one thing we can do, and actually let me go back to that old project um, that we were working on just a moment ago. So if I go to this project, you'll notice it already has a bib file here. So we don't have a direct link with EndNote. We do have direct links with Mendeley and Zotero. So um, for something like EndNote or RefWorks, um, you want to export a bib file. And um, all the main uh, reference managers will allow you to do that. And then upload that, um, uh, resulting bib file into your Overleaf project. And then once you upload it, you can um, make sure your bibliography refers to that file. Um, and then you can use this cite command to bring in your um, references. You can also um, click on new file and you can see you can link from Mendeley or from Zotero um, to directly import bibliographies from those services. Okay, I know we are um, just about out of time. Um, I really thank you all for um, joining us today. Um, we will be following up on other questions that we may not have had a chance to answer today after the webinar. Um, and we will be having additional webinars in the coming weeks. So please keep an eye on our social media and blog and other sources to make sure if you'd like to participate in those that, um, that you're able to. Um, you can always contact our support team at um, support uh, at overleaf.com. And um, I'd like to encourage you to um, keep in touch and let us know if you have any questions or if you have any feedback for us. And I'll put up my email address and also our um, support contact email address as well. All right. Well, thanks everyone again for joining. Um, we really appreciate it. And please do get in touch if you have any questions and we'll also follow up with answered questions after the webinar. Thanks everyone.